Hey everybody, it's Dr. How you doing? I am so excited again to talk to you uh, about another topic of mine that's super favorite, which is the gut and poop and bugs. And we really have a great conversation today about a very, very important keystone species in the gut called acromancia, which is a big word, but actually is one of the most important determinants of your long-term health, your weight, your metabolism, autoimmunity, cancer, I mean, just so much. And I'm really excited today to invite a special guest who is the founder of Pendulum Therapeutics, Colleen Cutliff, who got her PhD in biochemistry and molecular biology from Johns Hopkins, undergraduate in biochemistry from Wellesley's, worked in, uh, in this industry for a long time and started Pendulum Therapeutics, which is a pretty extraordinary company. It's done something that nobody else could do, which we're gonna find out about in a minute. So hang on, I'm gonna invite Colleen on and see if she can get on. Uh, I think we got an exception. Yes, please. <laughs> I don't know why it's always so difficult. Um, but here we go. There we go. Hi, how are you? Hi, great. How are you? Thanks so much for having me. Of course. I'm so excited about this conversation. So, um, Colleen, you, you are really a pioneer in the whole microbiome space. Um, and you created a product that is so essential with a huge gap in the marketplace, which is a very specific probiotic. Um, so I'm just going to share a little bit about my experience first, and then we can kind of get into what this probiotic is, why it's important, why it's different. Uh, and, and, uh, my experience was I, long story short, I had uh, an antibiotic for a bad tooth root canal got C diff, which is a terrible infection in the gut turned into colitis. So it was basically turned into an autoimmune disease. I could not get my gut straight, all my tricks, everything. So. I did a lot of research and realized, you know, I, and I did my stool test and I found I had no acromancia, like not zero. <clears throat> and I was like, oh boy. And I knew how important it is for protecting the gut lining and leaky gut and healing the gut and immunity and so many other things. So I was like, well, I don't know. You can't really take it and there's no probiotic. And it was very frustrating. And I was like, maybe there's something in Europe. And, and uh, so I basically figured out that the thing loves to eat certain foods. It loves polyphenols, like all kinds of Cran cranberry, green tea, pomegranate, turmeric, like all kinds of stuff. So I started just eat, eating a ton of these and I made a shake. I call it my acromancia shake. And it really kind of basically cured me. And I've used it on so many patients and it's been really a miracle. So that's sort of my experience with it. And, and I wish you had the product out when I was sick because it would have been a lot easier. <laughs> but I take it every day now as a maintenance and keep my acromancia up. So um, Colleen, tell us why, why should we care about acromancia? Why is this a hot new probiotic. Most of you listening probably never heard of it, but I, I really want you to explain to people why it's so important. And, and then we'll get into like why no one made it except you and how it works and all that. So tell us about, about it a little bit. Yeah. I mean, thanks for sharing your story. And I think your story is a, is a pretty common one where, you know, many people can probably identify with, you know, having gone on antibiotics for whatever reason, and then realizing they have a really upset tummy or they've got new GI issues that they never experienced before, but not everybody knows like you do, Hey, let me go take a gut microbiome test. And then maybe also, what do I do with all this information that I just got from my test? And so yeah. I think, you know, the, the world is starting to get more educated because uh, of the work that you're doing uh, and many others around, you know, these gut bugs and, and all of the emerging science that's coming out around them. And among that science is really this new strain that, that is starting to kind of emerge as a keystone strain in your gut microbiome, Acromancia mucinophila. There are over 1,500 published peer-reviewed publications about its role. And I think, you know, what's, what's becoming very interesting is that we might have all these symptoms that we go to our doctor and talk about, and it's unclear exactly why we're having those symptoms and we're starting to understand is if you're missing this strain, it could be causing a lot of fundamental issues that if you just repopulated your gut with it, you could be relieved of all of those, those symptoms. So tell us, what are, what are the kinds of things that low acromancia is associated with? Yeah, in, in all of these publications, there's been a, a myriad of things. And so uh, kind of first and foremost is really around, um, you know, the gut mucin layer and making sure that uh, that is being properly regulated. And that's one of acromancia's roles. And so what happens, you know, when you don't have acromancy and you don't have the right mucin regulation, it shows up in things like um, GI distress, uh, you know, your typical things, you know, diarrhea, constipation, pain but it's becoming more broadly understood that it actually has a role also in how your body metabolizes foods. 
um, how your body ensures that all the small molecules being made in your gut microbiome stay in your gut microbiome and don't make their way into your bloodstream. And so when that happens, you start to get things like inflammatory issues, weird immune responses. And so you start to see this broad uh, host of indications that are now associated with low acromancia. So it's not just GI issues, it's metabolism issues, it's immune issues, it's inflammatory issues. And so we're just starting to learn, we as a scientific community, just starting to learn why is acromancia so important and all of the implications of having low acromancia. Yeah, it's pretty amazing when you start to dig into it. I mean, uh, the, you know, so for people listening, acromancia is the name of the bug. It's a, it's a keystone species, so it's a really important anchor species in your gut that has so many effects on your health. The full name is acromancia mucinophilia, which is a fancy name. But mucin is essentially the, the kind of, think of it like a layer of protection lining your gut so that poop stays in, not in your gut and not goes into your bloodstream and food particles don't leak in. And what happens is when acromancia goes low, there's a lot of people who have very, very low acromancia. And I've been testing it for a while now. And it's just shocking to me how many people have very low acromancia. You can't form this mucus layer. You tend to get leaky gut and then food and poop leaks in. It creates inflammation and all these other effects. And we've seen it linked to, for example, heart disease, diabetes, um, autoimmune diseases, obviously gut issues. And uh, I just say a quick story and then I have some more questions for you. But uh, you know, William Lee, who's a road eat to beat disease, a good friend of mine. Well, he, he told me a story about his mother who, I, I guess he told me I could tell, but it's, it's, I think he's fine with it. But he said she had stage four uterine cancer. And you know, one of the things they're finding is that there's certain drugs that we've developed, which are really miracle drugs, these immunotherapy drugs called checkpoint inhibitors. And they, they help use your own immune system to fight the cancer. And you can literally cure stage four cancers. That's what happened to Jimmy Carter. He had stage four melanoma. So these are miracle drugs. But it turns out they don't work very well if you have low acromancy. And so his mother failed treatment, but then he, he checked her stool and she had low acromancia and he gave her acr acromancia uh, boosting polyphenols from plants and got her acromancia up and got the immunotherapy and was cured. So it's like mind blowing that your gut plays such a role in all these different conditions. And it's easy as you know, eating the right foods and, and taking some probiotics. So um, tell, tell us about, about what the causes of low acromancia are and why there hasn't been an acromancia probiotic uh, before. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, your point about the the importance of acromancia is, is so great because, you know, I sort of think about it like I've got a I've got a wooden fence in my backyard. And when I uh, first moved into my house, that wooden fence was brand new and, you know, kept all my my insides on the inside and my, my neighbors on the outside. And, you know, this this fence is sort of like your your gut lining. And what can happen over time is, uh, you know, through weather and and snow and sun that fence starts to get uh, a little bit weaker and sometimes a plank can fall down. And essentially what happens when your fence in your backyard starts to fall apart is all the outside elements come in and the inside elements go out, you lose your privacy, all sorts of other repercussions. And, and that's really a, a similar of what's happening in your gut. So acromancia's job is to be the guy manning the fence to make sure that it's always strong and sturdy. And so if you're low in acromancia, you don't have your, your really strong fence that, that kind of protects you um, and keeps all the, the bad things from coming in and all your good things from going out. And so what are the things that can cause you to become depleted in acromancia? Certainly an antibiotic treatment. Uh, and to be clear, I'm not an anti-antibiotic person. They have saved millions of lives. You should take antibiotics if you have a bacterial infection. But this does really decimate your entire microbiome, including your acromancia levels. And so that can be one reason things get depleted. But what we're finding is that there's all sorts of other things that are outside of our control. So it's not just taking antibiotics or your diet, but also things like stress, which many of us have been dealing with over the last couple of years in, in extreme what? ways. <laughs> um, you know, traveling to different time zones, aging for women, uh, every time we have a menstrual cycle or when we go through menopause, these things can all cause us to become depleted in, in some of these really key strains, including acromancia. And so the question is, you know, how do you get it back into your system? And similar to you, I've had cranberries 12 different ways. I know how to prep, prep them in, in any meal, but <laughs> You know, is there a way to also boost acromancy by, by simply introducing the strain itself, along with all of these great prebiotics that, that feed it? And I think um, that was really a big interest of ours as we started to understand how fundamental acromancia was to gut health. 
And, and that's why we really invested the last decade of our lives trying to figure out um, what can we learn about this strain and how can we start to get this into the hands of people who were depleted in it. Wow, it's incredible. So why, why wasn't it available before though? Is it hard to make or like, it just seems so obvious, right? Oh man, like all wonderful things, it's a little bit of a diva and not easy to, to obtain. And so um, one of the things that many people don't know about your, your gut where your microbiome actually resides is that it is anaerobic, meaning there's no oxygen there. And so many of the probiotics that are on the shelves today, when you go to manufacture them, they're not strict anaerobes. In other words, you can have some oxygen in your manufacturing system and it's no big deal. But uh, but but acromancia is not like that. Essentially, if you have one molecule of oxygen during manufacturing, the whole batch dies. It's very sensitive to oxygen because it lives in your mucin layer where there's no oxygen there. And so in order to manufacture it, uh, you have to create a closed end-to-end -end system of manufacturing where no oxygen gets in from beginning to end. And we had to build that ourselves and there was no blueprint for building this plant. We just had to figure it out. And, and to be honest with you, um, it was really expensive. And so you have to really believe this strain is super important and it's worth the investment of building that thing out. And we had PhD microbiologists building this thing. And so I think uh, the reason people haven't gone after it is because it's hard and it's not obvious that yeah. it, it can be done. Well, thank God you did it. <laughs> thank God you did it. So tell us about some of the stories about people who've used it and what the changes have happened, what kind of conditions, what are you seeing, what are you hearing? I mean, have, have there been any studies or interventional studies done on it like this? Because, you know, it seems to me it hasn't been able to probably study that much because it's, it's really only been recently known and been manufactured, right? Yes, I mean, we originally uh, put acromancia out as part of a formulation in pendulum glucose control, which is for people with type 2 diabetes. And in that formulation, we have clinical data from a placebo-controlled, double-blinded, randomized trial that was published in BMJ that shows that um, in this formulation that acromancy is a part of, uh, you can lower A1C and lower blood glucose spikes. And, and compared to placebo, A1C went down by 0.6, blood glucose spikes went down by 34%. Wow. We all know that the ability to manage blood glucose spikes is super important. And so in that context, uh, that was really compelling. Now, we just released acromancia as a strain by itself because there are actually lots of people were asking us to just release it by itself because they were trying to solve a very specific problem of being low in acromancia and trying to get their, their levels back up. Um, so we have not run a clinical trial in with acromancia by itself, uh, but we have customer testimonials and things that people are sharing with us. And it's interesting because people are trying the product for a wide variety of different reasons. Many of the things that, that you pointed out, but um, we're, we, we haven't run a trial in it yet. So I don't want to say what kind of results we have without the backing of a clinical you know, study. <laughs> well, yeah, anecdotally, we're seeing, I see a lot of really dramatic improvements in my patients. So I love it. And I think, you know, um, what people understand is that, that probiotics are not like a uniform thing. It's like penicillin and it's all the same. There's many, many different strains. They all have different functions. There's hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of strains across the population. And what really is, is important is for people to get that, that they need to keep their gut healthy. So um, where, where, where are the things that you, you could expect is sort of coming down the road around uh, the microbiome and, and healing and all the science we're getting now? Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm biased. Of course, I've spent my life now in, in the microbiome. I, I think it is a huge opportunity and an unlock for a science that hasn't existed before. And, you know, I cut my teeth in pharma, building small molecule drugs. And but I have become a believer that you can create products that can help people that are a natural part of their system that don't have to be these chemicals that have all these terrible side effects and your body doesn't know how to metabolize them. If we could use, you know, apply that kind of science into the natural world, we could create products that literally have the efficacy of a drug, but the safety of a probiotic. And I think that's what the microbiome offers. And it's not just for gut, you know, what we think of as normal GI issues. It's now also for things like obesity and type two diabetes. And I think probably one of the most fascinating areas that that's going to really emerge for us is this gut brain link. So um, I started my research uh, career trying to find cures for Parkinson's disease. Oh, wow. And what we were looking at was always the brain. You, when you get Parkinson's, you get these plaques in the brain. It's similar to Alzheimer's. And so we were always looking at those plaques and saying, how do we reduce those plaques? How do we go after what's happening in the brain? 
But it turns out that, you know, we all know that the neurons in your brain, you get what you get. And when they die, they die. But you have neurons in your gut and they are constantly regenerating and they are sending neurotransmitters to your brain. And what is becoming clear is that you start to see those kinds of plaques show up in the gut neurons before the brain neurons. And so there's a huge opportunity to target the gut neurons and the remodeling of those uh, as a potential way to prevent uh, bad neurotransmission to the brain. And so it might be the gut that we should all be looking at and not the brain for these neurodegenerative diseases. And I think that's just going to be so cool. Wow. So we're working at the wrong end of the stick to fix the brain. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're right. You know, the gut brain is a huge thing. And it's the brain brain, the gut brain. It's, it's a bidirectional communication system. And, you know, what you're talking about is sort of mind blowing because, you know, how does, how does one sort of, simple supplement address so many different diseases across the spectrum of neurodegeneration, cardiometabolic health, autoimmunity, cancer, it's gut issues. I mean, it's just extraordinary. And I think what people don't understand is that the gut is the cornerstone of your health. So if you're not tending your inner garden properly, if you're not making sure you're getting rid of all the crap that makes your gut unhealthy, all the processed food, sugar, if you're not taking the right pre and probiotic foods, if you're not taking the right probiotics, you can end up, you know, your health degrades over time. Uh, and, you know, it's interesting, I was, had another, another, um, another company that was actually uh, you know, in vivo, which are, has created another probiotic strain that's for babies, uh, because there's another keystone species called Bifidobacterium infantis that regulates so much of the baby's health and long-term health around autoimmunity and asthma and allergies and all kinds of stuff. And, it's like, wow, you know, you've got a drug, you know, a probiotic that could help someone with Alzheimer's or Parkinson's and help babies. And it's like, it's just such an exciting field and an exciting moment. And they used to call me uh, at Canyon Ranch where I worked, they used to call me Dr. C every poop. Because I basically, <laughs> <laughs> I've been like, studying poop for like 30 years. And uh, it's just the most amazing thing when you start to work with the gut and heal the gut and repair the gut. And you start to actually learn about how all it works. I'm learning so much. I mean, I feel like when I started, we were in the dark ages, and now we're seeing so much, and we're learning from um, the microbiome field, and your work is just so important. Um, Absolutely, uh, and I would say, you know, you probably get this a lot too, we all sort of inherently know that it's important. We know that when we eat certain foods, it can cause us to feel certain ways, or vice versa, when we're feeling a certain way, like I can tell you, there are definitely times where I just need chocolate. And so we, we know that there's a relationship between how we feel and what we're eating and our gut. And I think that's all, uh, we're, the science is now catching up to maybe things that people sort of, for, sort of know. And one of the funny things talking about poop is I often, you know, take a moment to reflect and wonder how, how did I end up in, in this, you know, field at all. Um, but one of the interesting things is, you know, let, let me ask you a question. Have you ever, you know, pooped and then turned around and looked in the bowl to try to see what does your poop look like? Never, not even once. <laughs> Who would do that? <laughs> yes, shockingly, actually everybody does this and, and you get annoyed when there's too much toilet paper in there because you're like, I can't really see my poop. And, and so the question is, why? Why are we always looking at our poop? Why are we fascinated by what's going on in there? And, and I think the answer is actually something very caveman and very fundamental in us, which is that of all these, you know, great wearables and diagnostic tests and things that we have in the world today, poop is sort of the OG, it's the original diagnostic test. And what we're really looking for is, is something changing in my poop. And you're just constantly getting baseline data on what your poop looks like, because when it changes, that's actually what you're surveying. So I just think we're all doing this and we don't even know why. And now the science is finally catching up to what we're all doing anyway. Okay, okay. Is, it, is there an AI <laughs> app that you can like take a picture of your poop and then like it tells you everything about it? Okay, that's gotta be your <laughs> next company. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy. Someone wrote, if, if uh, beneficial bacteria is the 1990 Chicago Bulls, then acromancia is Michael Jordan. <laughs> oh, I love it. Excellent. That's great. We should just put a picture of Michael Jordan next to the, next to the ball. Uh, I, I think love it. It might be true. It might be true. <laughs> you know, you can get stool tests. I use Genova Diagnostics. There are other labs, but there are a lot of microbiome labs. But I, it's a very... To me, that's a very important test because it's not just looking at the bacteria, it's looking at also the function. What are the short chain fatty acids that are produced? You know, what are the, what's the absorption? What are the inflammatory markers? What's the immune system doing down there? You know, what are other products that are being produced like beta glucuronidase that can indicate bad bugs in there? So it's really an important test. It's comprehensive, not just 
not just looks at you know PCR testing of bugs. I think people get very reductionist, but I tend to look at the, the whole functional system, right? Um, and I think for me, um, you know, this is such an important probiotic because I would say, you know, of the sick, obviously I'm looking at sick patients, but probably like good 50 to 60% of patients who I check are either non-existent or very, very low on a PCR test for Brachyomancia. And so I'm always putting them on this cocktail of stuff, which is a pain in the ass because it's like a lot of different things to make it grow. But what's so nice is you can just take a probiotic. It doesn't mean you don't want to also feed them because one is the bacteria and the other is the food they like. So can you, can you talk about some of the research about the food that Acromancia likes and the polyphenols and how that plays a role and what are the most powerful ones and what you've learned? Yeah, I think it's it's really important to to know that it, it's not just about giving yourself the bugs, but but certainly uh, trying to feed them so that they can continue to propagate. And I think this is still emerging research, you know, on on how um, to your point, this is a network of a and an ecosystem of a bunch of different strains that are all interconnected with each other. And so we've approached this as a systems biology problem, where you have all these different pathways in the microbiome, and they interfere with each other and intersect with each other, but then they also inter intersect with, you know, the host. And so, you know, right now, I would say there's the most evidence around the role of polyphenols in increasing and being the food for your acromancia strains. Um, and, and polyphenols, uh, you know, come in a, in a variety of different foods. We've talked about cranberries. There are also polyphenols in uh, chocolate as well as red wine. So, you know, it's important to incorporate chocolate and red wine into your diet so that you're getting your polyphenols. <laughs> Just for acromancy, that's it. <laughs> Um, th that's at least the, the diet that I've given myself. But yeah, I think um, the, the, the idea here is that if you can look for foods that are rich in polyphenols and you can pair those with delivering acromancia, you can make sure that you have high levels of this really important strain. And if you go take a test and you're, and you're low in acromancia, um, you know, and you go put yourself on, you know, higher p polyphenol diet, uh, take your shake, your acromancia boosting shake and take our acromancia, and then you go back a few months later and remeasure, see whether your acromancy is going up. Because I think one of the things we're gonna learn about here is the personalized uh, nature of this. Because you have an ecosystem that already exists, the way in which you change that ecosystem is probably gonna be a little bit different for, for everybody. And so you really wanna test and know, that's the only way to know for sure if you're really changing your acromancia levels. And I think the more physicians that understand how to use the test in conjunction with uh, lifestyle changes, the, the better all of us are going to fare from that. And I mean, it's just new. A lot of doctors are not as forward thinking as you are, or even know what to do with the test results. No, no, it's true. My daughter's in medical school now. I said, how much are you learning about the microbiome? She's like, not much. I'm like, just let's study poop test. No, nope. it's like, <laughs> it's just a black hole. And yeah. I think, uh, you know, we'll do stool for O&P. We'll look for pancreatic elastase and for parasites. We'll look for sometimes gut immunology, like palprotectin. There's a few things we do. Uh, you know, we look at cultures and so on, but there's so much information there. It's like the most complex organ we have, really. There's a there's, there's hundred times as much DNA in our poop as there is our own DNA. So it's amazing. Um, so in, in, so it's, if you were sort of designing a diet, to, to the, best, the best polyphenols for, for acromancy, is it a chocolate and wine diet, or is it more a cranberry and pomegranate diet, or maybe a little green tea in there? Like, where are we going? All right, fine. It's probably more a cranberry, blueberry kind of diet. I mean, I think the important <laughs> thing. <laughs> I, I think the other important thing is to, to I know have wine and chocolate for breakfast every day. It's good. <laughs> I mean, it's just the right thing to do. Um, I, I think the other important thing is is knowing that having a high fiber diet is super important for uh, bolstering strains that that produce short chain fatty acids, and you know that that is another really important function in the in the microbiome. So if you can you know eat foods that have polyphenols and fibers in them, you know this is really a, a great way. But you know honestly, having some blueberries you know in your in your breakfast, and then as I said, getting cranberries into your diet. I mean, I think those are two of the ones you know that are, that are uh, two of the foods that have the highest amount. Um, but you can also purchase polyphenol, you know, extract. Um, and I think that's becoming more and more widely available. And that's another way to get it into uh, the gut microbiome. So, um, but that's the thing to look out for is acromancy and polyphenols. Yeah, I, I, I put in, uh, I have bought Lakewood and I don't have any connection with the company, but Lakewood is a, has a has organic brand of cranberries because non-organic cranberries are not good. Uh, organic pomegranate 
like concentrate. So it's not sweetened, so it's like super pungent, like it's strong. So I'll put a tablespoon or two of that in my smoothie, pomegranate, I'll get some green tea powder, throw that in. I have some turmeric stuff I put in, uh, you know, just different polyphenols, and then I try to eat as many as I can. So I, I feel like it's such an important, it's just such an important thing people need to understand is that you need to design a lifestyle that incorporates gut care. It's like, it's so primary. So every day I'm taking probiotics, because you know, most probiotics, unfortunately, after, after childhood, they don't stick. You kind of have to take them. It's kind of one of the bummers about it. There are ways to change the population of your gut, but it, food is the only way really. So you've got to change the food and then you can, you, like you said, if you eat all these polyphenols, you can get more acromancia, but you still, I think you need to take probiotics. And then you need to make sure you're taking the right prebiotic foods and other probiotic foods and fermented foods and, you know, stay away from all the gut busting drugs and the gut busting foods. So it's really, uh, it's so important. And uh, whether I'm treating someone with an autoimmune disease or cancer or overweight, whatever it is, it's, it's amazing how powerful the gut is. I mean, I had a guy once with a diabetic, I had him on a ketogenic diet, which should have like fixed his diabetes but it just wouldn't get better. I mean, it was better, like it wasn't, he wasn't like, it was dramatically better, obviously, but, but still he wasn't able to get down to where he wanted. He was, like, he was well over 250 and he got down to like 150s, 160, which couldn't get it normal. And then one day he called me and said, Dr. Herman, I'm having a lot of digestive stuff. Like I'm bloated, I'm really, I don't know what happened, I'm like really uncomfortable. I'm like, okay, well just short term, we'll get figure out what's going on, but short term, take some charcoal. Like that, his blood sugar went to like 90. I was like, wow. So there was toxic bugs in his gut that were putting off some kind of molecules that were driving his diabetes and his blood sugar out of control. Yeah, this is such an important thing for people to understand, which is that there's a pairing of your food that you're eating and the microbiome that's in your gut. It's like you've got a car and you're putting great fuel into it, but you don't have an engine in the car. So the engine is your microbiome. The fuel is the food you're eating. And it's not enough to only have one of those working. The two really have to work in tandem. And, and many people have experienced this where you say like, I eat the same food as that person and yet my metabolism is totally different, why? And the why is now becoming clear. Well, it's your microbiome, it's how your body's metabolizing that food. So it's not just about having the right diet, but about having the right microbiome. And, and that, you know, unfortunately, there is a very old school way of thinking that you can cure, you know, everything through just a diet, including, you know, obesity, type two diabetes, prediabetes, and you got a lot of people in earnest working hard to change their diet, and it is not enough. You have to have the right microbiome paired with that. And so, you know, how do we how do we get that word out there to, to help people understand these two parts of, of the story? Yeah, well, everybody, I'm going to save this. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, uh, Colleen, Colleen, thank you so much for starting Pendulum uh, Therapeutics. It's such an important addition to the field of gut health. Uh, everybody can go learn more at Pendulum Life dot com and uh, you were so nice to offer my listeners who are listening a 20% off your first order at Pendulum Life using the code Hyman at checkout. It's it's awesome. I encourage you to do it. My gut keeps getting healthier and healthier and I learn more and more and I think you know it's one of the keys to longevity which I'm more concerned about now that I'm in my 60s. <laughs> so, <laughs> but everybody should check it out and uh, thank you for what you do and, and I'm excited to see how the company grows and expands and thank you. Thank you so much. And please, for anybody who's trying the product, reach out to us. We'd love to learn what you're dealing with and how this is helping. We're just, you know, learning all of this stuff together. So thank you so much. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Of course. And it'll be at pendulumlife.com. Uh, and then you'll see the, uh, the link. And just put in the code 20, 20% or 20% Hyman. All right, thank Colleen, you. Take, care. take care, everybody. See you soon.